Reggie. Everyone knows you can do comedy. You should try a dramatic role. Now, you might be another Basil Rathbone. Uh, Fred, do you think the world is ready for another Basil Rathbone? <laughs> I think some post-war plan about Rathbone should be brought up. <laughs> You know, you can get your eyes pulled out a little and your hips lowered and be another Peter Lorre. Well, what's this play of yours about? It's a murder mystery solved by a man the world has never heard about until tonight. Sherlock Holmes' brother-in-law, Fetlock Bones. <laughs> this case is called The Pekingese of the Basketville. As the play starts, we hear a crescendo of dramatic music. <laughs> In the annals of crime detection, no figure looms larger than Sherlock Holmes' brother-in-law, Fetlock Bones. As our story opens, it is a foggy night in London. Fetlock and his friend, Dr. Potson, are at home in their little flat on Baker Street. Dr. Potson is deep in the study of anatomy. An esquire lies open in front of him. <laughs> Fetlock Bones... <laughs> Fetlock Bones is pacing the floor, playing his violin. Say, Bones. Yes, Potson. Uh, that tune you're playing, uh, what is it? It's a new American tune called Mares He Dotes and Does Do Likewise, and little lambsies are up to something. <laughs> Extraordinary. Oh, no. I see the telephone. I shall take it, Potson. Are you there? Are you there? Yes, are you there? No, I'm here. <laughs> well, you must be there. I'm here. Can you come here? Where is here? Not far from there. Well, I should... I shall be there. Well, I shall be here. Righto. Righto. Cheerio. Cheerio. Stop too quick. Me Rayon Burberry, me Peaky Chap, me Needle, me Spike Jones records. I'm off. <laughs> There's been dirty doing. I'm off to Basketville Mansion. <laughs> Thank you. I am Fetlock Bone. And I am... I know, I know. You are Mr. Basketville's butler, Rancid. You were born near Surrey with the fringe on top. <laughs> you have no shin in your right leg. Your father raises aspidistas, and you have a cousin, Cecil, who has a punctured eardrum. Amazing, Mr. Bones. How did you know? I'm on your draft board. <laughs> What is the two do here? The two of Mr. Baskerville's guests have disappeared. This house is cursed, Mr. Bones. Isn't there some legend about Baskerville Mansion? <laughs> yes, sir. Whenever the Pekingese is heard barking, someone dies. That's it. The Pekingese of the Baskerville. I don't like it, sir. The Pekingese has barked twice tonight. Where is your master, Barkley Baskerville? He's in the trophy room. I shall announce you. Announce him, Mr. Fetlock Bones. I'm Barkley Basketball. Come in, Mr. Bowen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I see what magnificent trophies you have here on the wall. That lion's head is a ripper, old boy. Yes, potted the beggar with my second shot. And the first shot? Potted my guide. <laughs> this is the guide's head mounted on the other wall with the cow lick and the dimple. Yes, fortunately he was smiling at the time. <laughs> Lightens up the room, don't you think? Rather, rather. Who does your taxidermy? Uh, Moxton, the bird stuffer on Fleet Street. Moxton. <laughs> you can't miss Moxton. He has a weasel throttling a young rabbit in the window. Oh, I see. What are these trousers you have mounted over here? I fired at a panther. The panther got away, but he lost his pants. <laughs> lost his pants? <laughs> That's a rouser, Basketville. <laughs> it is a bit of the old rowdy dow, what? Right you are. But let's get down to business. I hear you've had unpleasantness here tonight. Unpleasantness? A bit of it, yes. Two house guests done in. A bit of the old Erie or Del or Delaware like a Warner or something. <laughs> oh, that? Oh, well, there's nothing you can do about that, old boy. You know the curse of Basketville Mansion. You mean the Pekingese of the Basketville? It's been going on for centuries. Whenever the Pekingese barks, Someone died. I understand the Pekingese has had a go at the acoustics tonight, old boy. Twice, old man. My party is going to the dog. Party is going to the dog? Oh! Going to the dog. Oh, 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 oh. Who, are, who are your guests, old fruit? We're holding a class reunion. What school? Oxford, Cambridge? No, Chiselich on the office. Oh, 
Colonel Chislidge, Top Hole Academy. Thank you. Thank you. Where are you holding the reunion? In the turmoil room, through this door. I believe my mates are singing. Here's to the our Alma Mater, to our classmates, young and old. Here's to Chislidge on the up it. Your tradition, we're at home. Wrong, wrong, wrong. We know what from which. Chisel, chisel, chisel it. But definitely. Oh, darling. <laughs> 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 I say, hey. Exactly. Uh, classmates of Chiselich on the Uppage. May I present Fetlock Bones? Bones, this is Pippi Hollister. Uh, do. 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 Marmaduke Smith Smythe. Do. 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 <laughs> Pennington Pumpit. Uh, do. 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 And H. H. Buddle, recently returned from America. How do you do, sir? I beg your pardon. I said, how do you do? Terribly sorry, or jargon. I can't understand you. How do you do? <laughs> what is this blighter trying to say? He means uh, do. Oh, do. 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 <laughs> seen in America. Quite for how the colonies poop about with some other term. <laughs> too true, too true, old man. But what about those chaps who disappear? It's filthy, Mr. Burns. We were playing bridge. The lights went out, the dog barked, the shot rang out. Well, the lights came on and they were gone. Thompson be first, then Leffingwell. They both sat in the same chair. Show me exactly what happened. Uh, right oh, uh, Let's play another hand of bridge, mates. Will you sit in, Bones? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Marmaduke, will you sit in that vacant chair? Right, sir. We're ready, Basketville. Uh, let me see. I bid one heart. Uh, two spades. I knock with three. I'm Schneider. I say, the lights are off. <laughs> the Pekingese of the basket. Oh! Light! Light! Uh, oh, they're on again. I say, Marmaduke's gone. Oh, that blasted dog barked again. The Pekingese of the basket, Bill. Oh, Bones, do something. Three chiselage men have been done away with today. Yes, and each sat in the same chair. I shall take the fingerprint. Nobody touched the chair, Bones. They just sat in it. Sorry, I'm not equipped for prints that large, old boy. <laughs> There's only one thing to do. We shall reenact the crime. You, Buddle, sit in that chair. Not that chair. It's for Chiselich, Buddle. For Chiselich. Right, old bones. And now, Basket Bill, we'll play another end of bridge. Who's bid? The lights. They're off again. <laughs> the Pekingese of the Basket Bill. Let go of my hand. Who's holding my hand? Not so fast, matey. The lights, Buddle. Quickly, the lights. They're on, they're on, Bones. The mystery is solved, Buddle. Here sits the murderer. The cove who has done in your free chiselage classmate. Barkley, Basket Bill. Right, oh. This is preposterous, Bones. You can't prove anything. Oh, no? Then how do you account for this revolver strapped under the bridge table? Surely a coincidence. And this push button under the table. When you push it, see? A trap door. Sweeney Todd fashion under the chair gives way. Just a place for old razor blades. But Bones... <laughs> How do you explain the Pekingese barking? The dog is concealed in the basement. This other button sends a spark down and gives the Pekingese a hot paw. I suggest you confess, Baskerville. Yes, Bones, you've got me with my confession down. <laughs> you murdered your chiselage classmate. I had to, the foul blighters. Foul blighters, Barkley. The purpose of our class reunion was to present you with a purse of a million pounds sterling. I knew, Buttle. That's why I had to murder the entire class. You had to kill them because they were going to give you all this money? The gift tax on a million pounds today is a million and a half pounds. Oh, I see. If, <laughs> if you had accepted the gift... I would have been ruined. The class would have wiped me out. So instead... I wiped out the car. <laughs> this is Fred Allen speaking for Texaco dealers from coast to coast, reminding you that gasoline powers the attack and don't waste a drop. Thank you and good night. <laughs>